Hey everyone, it's Brody. I got the opportunity to preview Glory, a game of knights by Strategos Games on Tabletop Simulator. In Glory, a game of knights, you will become a valiant young knight who will train in various aspects of life to become a famous knight. You'll do this by earning fame in quests, challenges, and jousting. During each turn of the game, you will need to choose where to spend your precious time. Do you decide to train, gather allies, pray, or visit your lady? Remember to use your relics, your faith, and your allies at the most opportune moment so that you can be worthy to become the most famous knight across Europe of the 15th century. This game is a Euro board game that includes worker placement and tournaments between knights. The game is for 2-4 to four players with a possible solo mode that plays in 45 to 150 minutes. Before playing the game, you will need to decide how you will play the game. There is a tournament mode where you will fight different knights and the winners will move up until there is only one champion after every round. This mode involves direct confrontation between players because you will eventually fight each other. The other mode can play is dueling other AI knights. You'll flip the board over and use this side and when doing anything that mentions the tournament you're actually going to be using this side of the board. Later in the video, I will further explain how these boards work. So let's set up the game. The boards are placed on the table, and you'll pick the side that is the tournament board or whatever mode you decided to play. Helper tokens will be organized by their backs, shuffled, and the one back will be placed on the board starting on the right, where there are boxes of lower cost, the left where there are boxes of higher cost. Leave the left two boxes and place two random helpers with an X on the back. Leave all other stacks next to the board. The number of boxes used that offer no extra payment depends on the number of players in the game. These helpers create your entourage and take care of all your business that doesn't need your attention. Starting cards are shuffled and dealt out to each player. The top shows your income and what you will receive each round of the game, and the bottom shows your starting resources. You will also start with a level 2 mount card and a level 2 armor card, two win or loss round markers, two black mount dice, and two white armor dice. You can then slip your card under your player mat so the income is the only thing visible. When playing the tournament mode, you will also get four shields, and in the dueling mode, you will take two. This player area represents you as a knight. It's your time, your equipment, and your property. You can upgrade your mount and your armor, and in doing so, you will receive another die of that color each level that you increase. Randomly place a shield of each player on the initiative track. Each player will place their glory point marker of their color on space 1 of the scoring track. The phase marker will be placed on the first space of the space counter, and this will keep track of all the phases in the game. Once it gets to the bottom, it'll be the end of the game. Title cards will be shuffled and three placed face up next to the board. These are all goals that can be fulfilled by any number of players in the game. So more than one player can fulfill these. With the remaining cards, deal out 1 plus the number stated on each player's starting card, and these will be personal titles that only you can achieve for glory points at the end of the game. Shuffle all the Romance, Market, and Challenge cards separately and place them in three piles on the board. All these cards will be referred as quest cards. Each player will take the number of these cards stated on their starting card. You will have the opportunity at this time to discard any one card and choose a random Romance card in its place. After everyone is satisfied with their cards, reveal the top four cards from each pile and put them in columns on the board. Three event cards will be randomly chosen. Place the top one on the board in the indicated space. The second card will be flipped face up so the players can prepare for the next round, and the third card is face down placed underneath the second card. This card will be flipped face up after the first round is over. The coins, faith markers, strength markers, thug markers, dice, Knight tokens and relic tokens are all placed next to the board. The game is focused on fighting in the tournament or the duels. Everything done before this is to prepare for this main moment. So to explain the game, I'm going to start with the tournament and the duel phase that is done at the end of each round before going over all the preparations for that phase. So the game is three rounds, so you need to make sure that you're ready for the tournament or the duel at the end of each round. A setup card will be chosen, which will place random knights in different positions on the board. These will form matchups. When comparing knights, you will compare attack values. Whoever has the highest value will win the fight. 
If these numbers are the same, you will then compare prestige by counting the stars listed in the blue for the computer knights or the stars gained by any player if you're playing a player. Whichever knight has the highest prestige will then win that matchup. There will be knights of different attack values and role in the tournaments or duels, but the more difficult knights will give you more points. The top right will show you how many glory points you will also score if you win the matchup. In the tournament, you will sign up by placing your shield on an empty space. If you win, you will move up and face off against the winner of the connecting matchup. So you can only sign up for the tournament once. Before the tournament starts, all empty spaces will be filled in with a lower skilled knight. When playing on the dual side, you can place a shield in any city preparing specifically for that matchup. When fighting a knight, you will follow a sequence of possible stages before you end with your final attack value. Before you go through these steps, you will find out any winners of any matchups from only computer players only. It's important to know that your individual attack value will be calculated from the total of each highest die of each color plus any bonuses. Let's go through the fight sequence to show you how to increase this value. When a human player is fighting another knight, the knight who wins two out of the three rounds will win the fight. Before the fight begins, you can declare if you want to use your thug helper if you have one. This will cause that your opponent's attack value will be one less for the first round. When activating this, you can place it on your player board so you can remember that it's used. Next, you will declare how many strength markers to use to increase your chance of winning and place them on your player board. One marker will give you one strength die, two will give you two dice, three will give you three dice, and four will give you three dice but can immediately re-roll two of the others. Next, you will roll all of your dice. You will take the number of red dice from how many strength markers that you chose to use. The number of black and white dice are determined by the level of your mount and armor. If you used four strength markers, you will perform your rerolls as well. The next step is to use a faith marker. Doing this will allow you to reroll up to two of any dice. You'll place the faith marker on your player board when using it. You now have two chances to use helpers. If you use them, you will flip them over face down to indicate their use. We have already covered the thug and what it does, so let's go over all the other helpers, although only some would be activated during this phase in a fight, while others would be activated at a different time. Like the minstrel, he gives you four glory points when you get him. The squire will automatically let you set your mount die to the value of four, which is the highest number for that color. The nun causes you to reroll an extra die whenever you use a faith marker. The swordsman will let you set a strength die to the value of five, which is the highest of that color. The queen lets you draw an additional quest card when performing that action. The king gives you an increased prestige value. Next, you can use a relic. There are four types of relics in the game. The medallion will increase your attack score in this round by one. The amulet will increase it by two. The ring will let you re-roll up to any four dice. And the rosary will let you turn an armor die to the value of three, which is, again, its highest value. You would then add up the final results of your dice rolls, taking the highest of each color die, and adding it to any value of relics used. Note, you can only take the value of one die per color with the highest value. Your equation is this. The value of the highest red strength die plus the value of the highest black mount die plus the value of the highest white armor die, plus any relic modifiers, plus any helper modifiers. Remember, the player will only win the duel if they win two rounds. If you win the duel, then you will lose all the markers that you used on your player board and score glory points for defeating the knight. If you lose, you will return one of each different type of marker used, which might be a strength, a faith, a helper, a prestige, or a relic, and if you won at least one round, but lost the other two in the duel, you will score half the glory points indicated on that knight's token. When you are fighting against another human player during the tournament, you will follow the rounds like normal, except the player with the lowest prestige will perform their selection first. This gives the player with the higher prestige more information to make a better informed decision on what they should do during the fight. When winning against another human player, you will receive seven glory points. The winner of the final fight during a tournament will receive an additional glory point and one coin. Remember that your helpers, your relics, will be at your disposal, but when used, they will be unavailable in the next rounds of the same duel, but also in subsequent duels, so use them wisely. There will be a phase later on in the game where you can reset those. 
So now that you understand what you will be working towards, I will tell you how you can work towards the duels and the tournament. So you will follow the phases listed on the face track. The action with the night meeple is player actions and event phase. So following the initiative track, players will one by one place one of their meeples on an action space and perform the related action. Some actions require a payment of coins while others don't cost anything. There are spaces that are limited and they can be occupied by only the first meeple that goes there while other spaces are unlimited and can be occupied by multiple meeples. Players place all their meeples one at a time until everyone has placed them all on the board. Let's talk about some of these actions. Here you can train and gain three strength markers. Here you can pray and gain three faith markers. Here you can serve by enlisting into the army and gain three coins. Here unlimited meeples can gain quest cards. You will choose two cards from any column. If you don't like any of the face up cards you can take one off the top of the deck and gain a random quest card. Remember, you might eventually gain helpers or other things that will increase the number of cards that you draw during this action. Here is the individual training where you will receive two strength markers. Here at the marketplace, you can upgrade your mount or your armor. You will pay the specified number of coins to upgrade one level better than what you currently have. Here are the supporters. You will take one of the helper tokens from any of the boxes and pay any of the extra cost that appears below the box that you chose. You can change the order of the initiative by going here and you will move to the first unoccupied box of the track and you will gain one coin. Here you can sign up for a tournament early and you will immediately put your shield on an empty spot. Here in the Splendor space, you will receive three random title cards. You will choose one of these to keep as a secret individual goal that only you can score at the end of the game. The next phase of the phase track is the quest phase. You have the possibility to play one to three quest cards from your hand. This phase is played simultaneously and cards will be put in a discard pile individually by your player area, as you might have title cards at the end of the game that might benefit from them. Romance cards will give you resources, market cards will cause you to pay coins to purchase items, and the challenge cards will have a player fight an extra duel going through the steps that I explained. The card will list your prize if you win the fight. If you happen to lose this duel, you can pick up the card back into your hand and play it again at another time. Next will be the refresh phase where the initiative track will be reorganized. Players will take back all their meeples from the board. Players will also flip over all used helper, prestige, and relic tokens. Make sure that they're face up now. All the helper tokens on the board that were not taken will be removed, and new helpers will fill in it on the empty spaces. Remove all the quest cards that were not taken, and display four new cards for each stack. Lastly, all players will receive the income listed on their starting cards. All right, this next phase shown by a shield will cause you to declare participation in the tournament or the duels. Using the order of the initiative track that was just rearranged, players will place their shield on an empty space on the tournament board or duel board. Remember, if you are not playing the tournament, you can only have one shield in each city. In the next phase, you will fight. You will go through the fights in the tournament to complete the duels. When fighting in the tournament, you can play one quest card from your hand for each stage of the tournament that you are missing. At the end of the tournament, or duels, players will take back their shields off the board. These phases will reoccur throughout the three rounds of play. There is an additional phase near the end of the game where you will play additional quest cards from your hands. And the last phase of the game is the title resolution phase. You will look at the titles next to the board that any player can obtain. You will score points for all players who accomplish these as well as any personal titles completed by each player. At this point, the player with the most glory points on the scoring track wins the game. As you can see, this game gives you many choices on how to prepare to fight your opponent. I think these choices are excellent, as you will want to have at least three quest cards each round when you have the opportunity to play them, or else you won't be able to benefit like the others are. You'll want to make sure to have enough strength and faith markers, as the strength markers let you roll more dice to hopefully roll a high number on one of them. Remember the strength dice has the five as its highest number and so if you're not getting these high numbers you are missing out. The faith markers will increase your odds on a better roll by letting you be able to re-roll any color dice. 
While trying to do all those, you also need to plan for future rounds by moving up on the initiative track and also gaining new titles that will give you more opportunities for more in-game points. You will always feel like you want more workers to take more actions to be better prepared. I like how there are different ways to upgrade your knight, like you can play a quest card to upgrade your mount by paying money, you could also place your worker on the market and pay that upgrade, or you could also fight another knight and upgrade your mount without having to pay the money, but by using other resources to win that duel. I guess what I'm trying to say is there are many different ways that you will upgrade your knight, and you'll try to match the best way that you can do this by trying to complete the requirements of your title cards and gain those in-game points. I like how there are different helpers that focus on certain areas when you find yourself not as prepared in a certain area. For example, if your armor is low and you haven't upgraded it since the beginning of the game, you can find a helper that you might use to help you in that area if you have a bad roll. So yes, the game has dice, but the main mechanic in the game is all about gaining ways to change the dice to better numbers. You can get lucky in this game and roll really well to win fights, but you can also play strategically to beat the player who has all the luck. I like how in many phases of the game, all players do the phase simultaneously. This helps shorten playing time and keeps all players involved the entire game. Now you have the choice in the game to include player interaction by playing in a tournament, which is pretty much means that you will eventually face off and fight each other, or you can play the duel mode where you will choose two knights to fight against that aren't other players in the game. I like the fact that the winner of the tournament is not necessarily the winner of the game. They will gain points for each fight that they win, but other players can use their time to gain points through title cards, with some helpers, with some quest cards, and with some event cards. So if you're not doing well in the fights, you can always focus on the other ways to gain points. Everything in the game returns back to the theme as well, and I love that. Like, if you lose in the tournament and don't move up to the next matchup, then you get to play a quest card. Why? Well, because now you have more time since you're not playing in the tournament anymore, and you can spend that time by visiting your lady, or visiting the marketplace, or practicing your duel and duel with another knight. Doing this can also help you score points still if you have a card that lets you, even though you're not in the tournament anymore. The game is nice and crunchy, that plays in the perfect amount of time, that doesn't overstay its welcome. The game combines great mechanics with a great theme and makes you feel like you are making all the choices to try to become the best knight in Europe during the 15th century. Again, this is Glory, a game of knights by Strategos Games. If you like what you see, then go back it.